she presents Asian Development Bank. Uh, she uh, she's she's a knowledge management specialist there, and we connected uh, through social channels, and we've been having discussions over the past few days. Uh, so thank you, Glow, for accepting our invitation, and I'd like you to share your opening remarks so that we can begin. Thanks, um, Abhijit. Um, I think that's the most interesting part of uh, kind of how we met it's the context um, yeah. and uh, I think my kind of key role here is to just shed some light as to how far what you guys have done has reached because um, for a little bit more context uh, Abhijit is correct I'm part of the Asian Development Bank um, and you know we operate out of 69 members across Asia and the Pacific and you know our goal is really to to see a region um, free of poverty, essentially, and, and and our main way of doing that is, you know, through these loans and technical assistance and grants to fund these large infrastructure projects. And um, you know, we've been doing that for 50 years now. Um, and within ADB, I'm part of a, a little bit of a smaller group um, that is focused on helping mobilize young people um, uh, for making this development happen in the region, basically. We've and and you guys are proof of this. Uh, we've shifted away from um, seeing young people as you know just beneficiaries essentially, but people who can create um, innovative solutions and startups and 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 we're just we're just finding ways to be able to empower um, you guys to be able to do this better. And um, again, just a, just an interesting story. I'll 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 try to make it a little more <laughs> colorful of Egypt. It's. Um, we were doing a study on uh, COVID-19 responses, essentially, but those that are very um, nuanced to young people, specifically the ones that are led by young people and for um, young people. And, you know, there are a lot out there now. And, and I guess what, what caught our attention about, uh, well, your organization, the CTF Accelerator, is um, really the breadth of expertise and, and what you're able to deliver to your stakeholders um, you know at this at this at this stage um, it's it's a lot of value so um, I did a little bit more digging uh, I looked through all the all the possible websites where your your you know your great work is, is, is shared and you know and you know bits and pieces and traces here and eventually it led me to this rabbit hole of, of, um, of Instagram. So <laughs> I feel like this is where I should have started in the first place. I was scouring the internet for, um, you know, your stories. And then I saw your website and then, and then I saw you were on social and, and I just, you know, I just went for it. I think, um, I, I think I messaged, I DM, I slid into the DMs of, um, Brooks Foundation basically. And, you know, it, 10 minutes later, um, I think this was around, 9 p.m. Manila time, which is where I'm based out of. Um, not 10 minutes later, I get a reply, um, and that's not, you know, that's not uh, usual for, for organizations. And I said, "Wow, this is, you know, this is, this is interesting." So I was, I was kind of like, you know, I, I gave a, a short introduction about why I was reaching out, and I said, you know, we've been seeing, you know, we've seen your work. Um, I've kind of read through the. You know the the roster of things that you're able to to give to your to, to help incubate these startups, and I said I'd I'd love to be able to to, to feature uh, you guys and and uh, have a platform where where more of these kinds of works can be pushed out, and hopefully it encourages more young people to do the same. And um, yeah, and then eventually we uh, Abhijit and I suddenly um, started talking, and then I said, okay, well, am I talking to the executive director? And he's like, yes, and. I'm like, wow, you're also the social media manager. This is so interesting. <laughs> um, you know, he was he was very responsive, and I appreciated that. And I think that just spoke to um, just this eagerness, and and, and it, it it really gave me a, an an insight into you know really how how much this is kind of something that you guys do. And and we, one one example of it is the fact that we're having this on on a Sunday. It's it's something that you all enjoy doing. It's not work for you guys, and. Um, yeah, so and we, we moved on to Telegram, and that's where we were kind of coordinating. I said, I'd, I'd love to have you, you, you personally um, feature or, or share more about what you guys are doing in a latter um, event that we're doing in, in, in August, which is the Asia Pacific Youth Symposium. Um, and, and I think it's just, you know, 
the, the connection has been, is, is kind of uh, unexpected, but it just means that there are, act, there are young people like myself. I, I am considered a youth by ADB standards and so many others who are doing what you guys are doing um, and, and, and you're so hyper-focused on your goal, which is to incubate these, these ideas and to make sure that they feel supported. And you, know, you never know when, when who's actually watching or who's actually seeing these things and who's, um, you know, like the, the, the breadth and the depth of your impact to the young people that you're able to reach, um, it's just, you know, sometimes you, you, you never know. Sometimes it's just one person who sees um, or is probably watching this or an Instagram post or sees these opportunities. I, I first of all, I'd like to commend you guys for, for doing this. And, and I, I really hope that, you know, through the, through the channels of help that you deliver to, to these startups, again, it's, I, think it's, I think it's great that you've identified and, and, and made it very clear um, where you're able to support through the mentorships and, you know, even through, through a little bit of startup capital. Um, I'm excited to know where, where these things could lead, um, essentially. And, and, you know, I, I, I'm also amazed at, at how fast you guys kind of work and, 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 and how kind of unapologetically youthful you guys are. I know, I know, I mean, I asked you about this in, in Instagram and I said, well, are you, um, mostly youth, um, organizations like, yes, most of the leadership are young people, you know, most of the, you know, the people that we support are typically young people or fall within that range. And I mean, I, my, my, what, what I think what's, what energizes me about what you guys do really is that, you know, COVID-19 has given us a space to think creatively. Um, I wish we were doing this in better circumstances, but really it's pushed us to become more uh, creative and innovative in the way that we find these solutions. And, you know, um, sometimes these things come from a simple realization at the beginning. Maybe you're sitting somewhere or, or you're kind of fiddling with your mask and something came to you um, or something just some, something so important that you resonated from social media or the news. And usually that's where it starts. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested to know about how certain ideas or how these pitches actually actually started um you know what, what, what what's the origin story of these pitches you know wh where were you were you playing the switch or did you suddenly thought well maybe we can gamify um <laughs> you know COVID-19 responses things like these and you know and, and I I, I want to put a value to these realizations it's because you know sometimes it one of two things can happen right sometimes it can just be a thought or a realization and it goes away and you continue with your life you, you know move on and that's fine i mean we're all kind of trying to cope <laughs> in in the ways that we know how but there's also the other um way that it can go which is wh why a lot of you guys are here which is you take that realization and you turn it into a response so that's my second key point so after you've had a realization you think well well what can i do about it and how can i respond right and 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 it's usually this this is the part where um a lot of a lot of individuals maybe get lost in all the details or all the ideas and, and feel, you know, kind of overwhelmed about, you know, I don't know where to start essentially. And, and I think for the pitches who are here, you've taken that journey from getting your idea to actually putting a structure and a story to it um, in, and, and believing in it enough to, to you know, to share it with, with, with everyone here in the world essentially. And, and I, I, again, for you to have made it this far, to have done the pitch deck for yourself, I, uh, I think that's tremendously valuable. Um, any, any way forward um, towards creating a help, or creating helpful solutions rather, is, is definitely valuable in, in these times. So, and I, and I think the third key thing, after you've had that realization, you've plotted out your response, it's clear to you what you wanna do, um, it's something that you're passionate about, um, and I think that's what COVID really is. It's more than just a health um, problem. It's it's really affecting all areas of our lives. It's it's an education thing, as some of as as Abhijit was mentioning. It's a you know it's a it's a mental health thing as well. Um, it's a work thing. People have been losing their jobs, and you know that 
that just casts a much wider net for 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 every kind of solution to be relevant and that's my key um and that's my my last point so after you've had that realization and you know what your response is and really i think it's just being very clear about how is this response relevant to you personally um why is this the response you've chosen why is this the idea you've chosen and what's the relevance to the community that you want to serve and i think for you to have made it this far and thought it this um thoroughly um you know you, you you're able to, to answer all those three questions and again i'm absolutely excited to see um just how your brains have have created these stories and 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 yeah i'm i'm really grateful to the uh, to the organization for giving me the opportunity to to see you guys in action and, and share these stories so from um on behalf of the asian development bank um thank you uh for for you know being the hands and feet of these responses and and I, we're, i'm excited to hear what these ideas are thank you abhijit uh, absolutely thank you globe uh, i think uh, you've summarized it pretty well and yeah it's been uh, uh, quite serendipitous on how we connected and how all of this came together so even for us like uh, putting towards this accelerator is something uh, that we primarily do for Uh, that we worked with organizations and set this up but then while uh, the covid response was going on we realized like okay let's uh, let's take things in our own hands and uh, put together what's the best way that uh, we can support innovators entrepreneurs uh, thankfully we received a lot of support uh, from multiple agencies uh, i'd like to just quickly thank them uh, before we start so uh twilio uh communications was uh, really uh, forthcoming in terms of uh, supporting us uh, with about $500 credit per uh, startup uh, or per uh, initiative and we got about $3000 worth of credits out of which uh, uh, 2000 have already been uh, uh, supported to multiple pro- uh, multiple initiatives uh we also got support from uh, message 91 messaging services so we supported the sms api in terms of uh, uh to one of the projects which uh, primarily went out and uh, did daily updates on the covid numbers uh then we had a lot of uh, uh like uh, fab lab nagpur uh, supporting with their efforts the global shippers network uh, supporting with their expertise uh we also have uh, uh like uh, think first principles which supported uh, with their expertise in terms of mentoring uh then we had ikp eden which uh, uh which is a hardware incubator based in bangalore they uh, they opened up their access uh, for startups that were building uh, uh like building hardware in uh, hardware stuff and supported them with different grants um and we were trying to actively collaborate with multiple people along the way we also got support from uh, uh like marico foundation where they were open to explore ideas sadly they were uh, it was uh, quite an high expectation of the uh, uh the solutions that they were expecting which uh, some of our uh, like innovators could not fulfill but then yeah they were very forthcoming in terms of supporting uh so does uh, with persistent uh, foundation uh, and we worked with different uh, uh initiatives which actually brought everything to scale uh while uh, and uh, we still grow growing like uh, while uh, we thought that we could end it in a couple of months cycle uh, but then we still getting support uh, we recently collaborated with another global shapers project uh, called block covid where we have like a bunch of uh, school students who are innovating for uh, such times and we've got five uh, very amazing uh, innovators from there and uh, we're exploring mentorship options and uh, trying to support them in in certain ways possible so probably the next weekend we hold this we'll have some of these school students uh, pitching their ideas to the world and uh, we will uh, we'll hopefully look at more engagement in terms of how can uh, even uh, somebody who's working at a school level uh, can really fly with their innovations uh, globally so we looking forward to expand the horizons of this project and uh, i'm really thankful to everyone who participated that uh, 
we had quite an overwhelming response uh, given that we didn't really promote uh, this entire accelerator project as much as we should have. Uh, but then we got some amazing ideas here and um, I'm thankful to every each of these innovators who are present today uh, for, uh, for building something for coming forward and trying to solve uh, solve for the crisis that we are ongoing at uh, it's it's still far from over for all of us and uh, i think we will we'll need more such innovations that will keep growing and keep expanding uh, in the times to come so uh, that's from my side again thank you Guru, for uh, joining us in uh, varun i hand it over to you you can start with the uh, sessions going forward Uh, Varun, you are not audible. Can you un unmute yourself? Yeah, sorry. Uh, can we have uh, Aditya Mishra coming up for the first uh, push? Aditya Mishra from LBL Alpha. Yeah, am I audible? Yes. So uh, I'll just share the screen in this case. Yeah, sure. So we have uh, basically yeah. five minutes of uh, pitch time, uh, three minutes for sure. uh, the Q and A, and uh, we follow the uh, two minutes of the buffer. Oh, yeah. Is the screen visible? Yes. No, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, is it still visible? All right, give us a second. Okay. Uh, good morning, members of the panel. We are Level Alpha, and we are here to provide a solution to cross contamination between patients and healthcare professionals through contact, droplet, fomite, and airborne transmissions as mandated by WHO. During transportation, testing, isolation, and hospitalization using negative pressure isolation facilities as guided by the National Center for Disease Control, New Delhi. Our solution, the patent for which has been applied through NRDC Hyderabad under the Department of Science and Technology is a, a COVID isolation capsule, which is a flexible, foldable, lightweight uh, capsule, which can en uh, ens ensure a patient inside is secured through uh, biochemical air contamination prevention and uh, a control unit which is able to monitor and control the, uh, the environment inside as well as the patient uh, parameters. Uh, we believe that in the next, next 90 days, we'll be able to uh, come up with a scaled up uh, version of our product with uh, finances and industrial support. Uh, as mentioned earlier, our device is a battery operated system with environmental control, HIPAA grade air quality filtration, sealed access to the patient, and uh, completely op operational ready with uh, in, in any kind of uh, terrain. If you look at any pandemic response scenario, our system seamlessly fits into that, uh, be it isolation wards, civil housing, railway isolation, carriages, hospital ships, and especially in rural areas where you have zero to uh, nothing uh, infrastructures available right now. Uh, we are building it with a mark of a price, uh, mark the price of around US 1K, uh, and ensuring that we have future plans basically for nuclear, biological, and chemical disaster scenarios, uh, noise isolation units, FDA approval so that we can enter the uh, North American and the European markets, uh, sports recovery capsules, and there's a special request from Indian Army for mobile operating theaters, which we'll discuss later. Uh, what we are different compared to any of the, our competitors is our value proposition of it being uh, self-disinfecting uh, due to our interior coating which is easy for cleaning and quicker uh, patient transitions, interior cha uh, chamber environment controls without any external power, conducted noise reduction of around 70 dBA uh, from the mechanical moving parts in the air uh, circulation system. 
uh, as you know the number of cases are going uh, rapidly uh, exponentially rising uh, we are targeting the state pandemic response system and indian defense which has requested for a rapidly deployable mobile operating th theater uh, indian railways national health mission csrs uh, agencies and countries uh, globally uh, as as said our unit economic uh, economics for each device is around 1000 us dollars with around 3 years of spares and maintenance we have a net margin of 30% uh, on that but we will reduce that we won't take that margin in case of donated uh, units if you see our competitors who are existing uh, if you see the pricing over a period of 3 years of the product life cycle and the features that we provide patient and capsule monitoring lightweight foldable uh, patient trackers uh, reusable uh, we have much more advantage compared to any of the others Uh, we can compress this four months timeline into 60 to 90 days if we have enough amount of financial and uh, technical support especially because of the industrial uh, collaborators our team has around a decade worth of startup experience and more than half a century of uh, defense engineering government research and tech uh, experience we are looking for around 50k in either grant or equity funding for the next 6 months majority of which which will be utilized for the mvp development uh, we are completely bootstrapped no financial uh, pri private financials in our cap, uh, cap table we are one of the top 15 selected companies uh, in the directory of msme and startups uh, department of defense production you can go to the link uh, one of the top 50 global startups uh, which have been shortlisted for immigrating to, to toronto canada under the startup visa program of government of canada Uh, we are happy that we are here right now. We will take any questions. Thank you very much. Um, any questions for uh, the moderator? Uh, uh, Aditi, can you just run us through the? I mean, uh, I most of us couldn't see the presentation completely. There were sure. one or two slides. Can you just run us through the? Presentation in one slide. Sure. Only the slide. Please tell me where where do I have to stop? Yeah. 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 Ye
Suraj. Suraj, we are not hearing you. Yeah, that's it. Still can't see it. We're still on the seventh slide. Did you run through the... Uh, yeah, the we did all the 16. At least on my screen, I can only see the seventh slide. That's it. Nothing else. Uh, should I just e email it to you yeah, so that you can done. run it from yes, your end? Yes, yes. No, no issue. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, this is uh, we had uh, mandated this no, earlier, but, <laughs> so it's yeah. okay for you. This, to, yeah, because that's, that's you can vet right. also the information. We, that we've got an idea us. about it, but it's just yeah. better with the presentation. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, Suraj. You are not audible, Suraj. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, even I wasn't able to see all the slides. It was only the first page and the seventh page. So for for in the purpose of evaluation, I think um, he uh, Aditya. Uh, well, Aditya, uh, does does the team have any technical expertise to produce this, uh, or uh, it's just an idea like? Uh, As in. Azan, what exactly would you be asking for? Because technical is a very broad. So when term I say term technical, term. it's a, it's a, this is a very mechanical thing. Okay, maybe sure. a, a, some, a person who is not into it. Okay, because it's a mechanical thing. So any team member who is into it, like uh, how will you build a, a prototype? Like, is it still ready? Or? We have already uh, say in the next one week we'll have a, a proof of concept a design which we are testing at College of Military Engineering Pune already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the only problem for us is uh, the industrial collaborators because we don't have the infrastructure to scale it up in any way, first of all. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, the other it's part of it is there right. are specialized weldings which are required for PVC, yeah. which yeah. Uh, requires high cost machinery, which uh, there's yes. no access to us. We tried okay. uh, all our labs and makers and everywhere that we have talked to, either they don't have the infrastructure or if they have the infrastructure, they don't have people actually right now. Okay. Okay. Because of lack of, uh, you know, the people going back home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this will be used primarily for hospitals, or uh, can it be used uh, in some other industry as well? So I'll tell you the examples that uh, the conversations that we have had. Mm. Uh, Indian Army is looking for a mobile operating theater, which has been a problem statement for them since 2018. So okay. this is a scaled up version that we will do, uh, which will be much more rugged for uh, army design and other things. Okay. But uh, currently we are talking to uh, the uh, MSRTC, the Maharashtra State Transportation, okay. because okay. they want to get our, their operations running for the Volvo especially, okay. where it, it can be really helpful where recycled air is, is circulating overnight for overnight travels. Okay. Then uh, we are talking to Indian Railways, we went to Command Hospital, which okay. is the uh, Indian Railways uh, Pune's unit. And okay. they asked us uh, to set up a demonstration because they'll be using the same for uh, their uh, trains which are running from Pune. Okay. Uh, in their AC compartments. We are talking okay. to private hospitals. We talked to Tata Institute of Social Sciences. We have talked to Naidu Hospital. We have talked to a lot of people in the last so when you, when you, when Because you we were uh, unable to um, actually manufacture it still. Mm -hmm. no, no, so when you say you'll be you'll build this into the trains, is, is the concept same like uh, we have in the uh, hospitality industry where, you know, there are capsules, uh, we have hostels uh, uh, with the capsules, you know. A person can go sure, in so and it, it is basically like a backpack, which is around nine to 11 kgs of weight, depending okay. on what type of battery that you choose. choose. Okay. And uh, then you open it up, it opens up uh, just like a sleeping bag and you inflate okay. it within three minutes. The system starts running. You put a patient inside it, close it. Uh, the patient, uh, you strap it on whatever device. Okay. And what are the, uh, yeah. Say the unconscious in that case also you have a different set of features. We add all of that to it. To it. Okay, fine. Please, please, yeah. uh, please share this paper to you. Okay. Sure. I have just uh, sent it over to you. I think email has gone already. Okay. You can just uh, go through that. Uh, okay, our sure. main concern is that uh, right now because of whole of MIDC, Bombay, uh, Nasik, mm -hmm. everywhere being closed, it is uh, impossible for us to actually get any kind of foothold in getting it manufactured. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, the dumb version of it is uh, ready. The electronics the, was done at least one and a half yeah. months back. Yeah, you are based out of? 
we are based out of pune but we are uh, incubated by atal incubation center bombay and we are uh, accelerated by uh, department of science and technology tbi bhuvneshwar okay uh, thank you i think we can uh, help you on that part uh, we'll discuss uh, uh, we'll discuss this uh, with you separately and support you in whatever way is possible sure uh, thank you very much team uh, it was uh, again uh, we wanted to get our product out uh, because we believe that it is very vital for uh, the infrastructure ecosystem thank you glow again for listening to us Thanks too this is great thank you thank you very much we have uh, mr gurmurugan from confuse technology along with uh, mr siddhi kema hello good morning uh varun and good morning guys yeah, let me just pick the presentation uh sorry we're not able to hear you yeah yeah just one second okay so you guys see the presentation on the screen yes we can okay so if any if uh, the presentation slides are moving let me know because last presentation i did not see the except the first screen so good morning everyone this is rail murgan here uh, with me uh, mr siddiq also there in the call i am uh, so we are basically from uh, compte stick india private limited uh, startup company from coimbatore we are working primarily on iot products and we do have expertise on uh, medical products too so in this covid time uh, we thought we will make a ventilator because there was a lot of need for ventilator uh, when the covid started and we earlier doing uh, the ventilator control system for some of the major oems so then we thought why don't we help people when there is a short of ventilators and then slowly ventilator requirement is not uh, very aggressive like it was in the initial stage and then we thought like instead of going and doing a ventilator we should do a sub system of a ventilator which will give much more data and which will also help uh, uh, quickly set up the ventilator for covid patients and also do a predictive analysis and uh, see how well the uh, treatment effectiveness so the problem basically if you look at right corona covid times uh, the basic problem is there are a lot of patients and there are very limited ventilators so and those ventilators does not have the features which are really required for uh, corona treatment and uh, those are not connected to the cloud where we do you cannot do analysis currently with the ventilator that you have and lot of automation is not there because ventilator was not primarily is, was uh, used to support only the and uh, basically to support the breath of the patient so primarily it was missing missing come all critical parameters like uh, uh, how they exhale pattern of the patient all that so then we thought we should come up with a equipment or a sensor which can be added to a ventilator or it can be work as a stand alone device so that's how we have thought of coming up with a sensor system that we name as a breath analyzer so basically the primary function of this device is going to measure the uh, uh, the etco2 they call us uh, uh, etco2 centrioidal carbon dioxide that comes out of uh, everyone's breath and also the nitric acid this basically gives how good is the uh, uh, lung function of a person so this will also help to do a pre scanning of covid patient before you take them to the hospital or before you put them into the ventilator because being ventilators are very limited so we thought uh, we will first use this equipment to do a pre screening so that the ventilator can be effectively used for the uh, patient who are really need of that and what we are also thinking is uh, being this an add on for a ventilator this also can work as a stand alone unit for whoever want to use it in home for analyzing their breath so how it is going to work the technology that they are going to is basically a ntr sensor uh, based on uh, 
the ndir we are going to measure the uh, gas concentration of the exhaled gas with this ndir technology and we are going to take this data to the cloud to do the predictive analysis and effectiveness of the patient treatment so key features it is going to measure the expired air of the patient expired volume of the patient and what is the pressure ventilator pressure that is being given and what is the inflation of the lungs and how is the respiratory rate of the patient and we do analytics in the cloud currently most of the ventilators mid or low end does not have connectivity analytics and co2 measurement all this the uniqueness is it is can it is a retrofit you need not to uh, buy the complete uh, ventilator with high end ventilator for the patient what you can do is you have a mid end or low end ventilator you buy this retrofit add on and make it as a smart ventilator so this also can be used for intensive care facility what we are going to do is we are going to do a predictive recovery management as the data is uh, taken to the cloud we are going to do a predictive recovery management so we are going to take breath by breath data to the cloud so breath analysis also will be happening future we are looking at asthma management cancer lung cancer detection at early stage and all this product we are going to make it in india and made in india so the differentiation if you look at the differentiation of our product compared to the premium product that is available in the market you can see this tick marks like we have everything integrated into one device the etco2 and uh, feno which is uh, exhaled gas and uh, the standard parameter that is used in the ventilators so that's why we said it can be used as a stand alone device or also can be a used as a retrofit device so currently we are uh, we have done the we already done ventilator control system now we are working on this ndr system analysis so final outcome is going to be a sensor module which can be integrated to a existing ventilator or it can be sold as a individual unit ip we have not filed as of now we are not applied for the patent so this is our project plan so if you are going to start the project we will take uh, maybe like 6 to 7 month to make our first prototype Uh, which is a functional prototype and maybe another 6 uh, month which is like end of the year we will have a minimum viable product so the fund required for each uh, we'll talk about here so the project cost i just shown a just a break up uh, of the project cost so primarily the total project cost would be like 25 lakhs for a year so the split up also shown what is the raw material cost raw material cost including buying components mechanical things all that that comes at around 8 lakhs this is an estimate and r and d design development applications development hardware development all that we are estimating somewhere 8 lakhs and some of the supporting materials we are expecting 3 lakhs testing and testing testing material 2 lakhs if required for some event participation business travel required for doing this estimating 1 lakh and patent if you want to do a patent building we are expecting 1 lakh and we have a contingency plan of 2 lakhs if you look at the market analysis you can see like ventilator market is really growing and growing now and uh, we are expecting at least 1 lakh ventilator in india to be produced and if you are going to similarly anesthesia machine because our device can go as uh, add on it can be used in ventilator it can be used in anesthesia machine also capnography market is there even our device can be used for that so if you look at the market analysis market is really growing very high demand is coming up and india itself the last one if you see india itself like there are only 10 ventilator manufacturers and 10 are coming up so if you are going to address only ventilator market the potential of this product is very huge so current market size estimation is 10 lakh sorry 1 lakh and what this is a time is the total available market and serviceable market is some, somewhere we are estimating 30000 if you are going to target the minimum of 10% of that market which we are expecting 10000 units in 3 years time and we are planning to the manufacturing cost of the device is 20k and if you calculate the estimated uh, uh, business opportunity is somewhere 20 crore and if you do the calculation like if you take an under being a medical product the product if you take a 100% profit then the profit going to be 20 crore in 3 years time so the business model as i said one we are going to work as a odm and one we are going to as a oem so we will supplying this as a add on market for the ventilators people who whoever make ventilator also can buy and use it or it can be used as a stand alone unit we will work with the distributor to sell the products to healthcare units or to an individual
So roadmap, we are going to start with the breath analyzer. Going forward, we are planning to scale up to anathia gas measurement and asthma management, VOCBS diseases and lung cancer. That's what we are planning. So team expert, I'm 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 Bail Murgan here. So I have like 20 plus years experience in uh, work with a design service company and uh, even worked as a application support engineer for a company called Texas Instrument. And I'm running this IoT Optistic India private limited company for last year. I play the role of uh, uh, technology development and uh, operations. And there is my partner, Mr. Siddiq, who is there in the call. He primarily there in the call. Uh, he is very hardcore medical guy. If any medical uh, thing, he can uh, just uh, answer in the call. That's why he is in the mute now. So he has done his uh, engineering uh, masters in Brilla Institute of Technology, and he worked in many of the medical products. He also done FDA certification, C certification for the products. He has done ventilators, patient monitoring, pulse oximeter earlier. The other project that we do in the corona, corona time, so we have done a smart bin. Uh, for hospitals to find out uh, how much the bin is filled, one product and easy tag product for tracking the uh, COVID quarantine people and social distancing ID card with Bluetooth we have completed. We have done a sanitizer dispensers. We are working on some of products that might be helpful for design and we are working on pulse oximeter. So we have we proposed ventilator, but we are now moved to ventilator to the ventilator subsystem uh, sensors. Some of our company key products, this is just one slide to show what we have done earlier. So key products of company, we do a lot of other products, but these are some key IoT products. Thank you for the opportunity and time given to present this. If any uh, questions, please feel free to ask us. Mm, that's a wonderful uh, Hi, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, well, Murgan, I have a couple of questions. So the first is uh, regarding the approvals. Okay, let's say it's a it's a medical device. Okay, yep. And it will be connected to the ventilators. Yep. It will require some kind of certification, or let's say a government approval from maybe uh, drug controller uh, of India. Yeah. Okay. DGCI basically. Yeah. So what are the controls? Like what are the approvals that is required for this? Let, let's say you have the product ready. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are the approvals that will be required? Yeah, actually, I, uh, well, Morgan, I will talk to you regarding this. Yeah, Siddiq is there. You will answer. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because actually, it's a monitoring device. It's not comes in therapeutic device. So okay. uh, definitely, we need uh, approvals. Uh, we uh, primarily the, this for uh, FENO and uh, ETCO2. There is already guidelines for FDA approvals. Okay. Uh, and also, we have to get from uh, approval from. Uh, a drug controller of India for any monitoring device also. So okay. we can go for it. Basically, primary FDA is actually, uh, they have the specification and guidelines for the approvals and uh, thing. We'll follow that actually. Basically, the capnography is already there, but if there is no system which has all the integrated, we are measuring not only the uh, carbon dioxide, uh, we are actually measuring the pressure, volume and everything. And we provide a system which can connect to the cloud. So it's okay. basically, it's a full analysis of the breath. Yeah. There's no currently no system available in the market. Okay. 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 Second, uh, second thing that I had, second question that I had was uh, regarding the return of investment and the cost structure that you have mentioned. Okay. So basically what you mentioned, what let's say a device will cost you 20,000 rupees and uh, considering the profit uh, profit margin of 100%. I personally don't think that is the right way to uh, price your product. When you price your product, it, it also depends on the on the market, the, the products that are available in the market. Okay, let's say a competitive product is available at a lower cost. So you just cannot apply the logic of 100% profit margin. I think you should come up with a strategy, let's say like we'll be having a 30% uh, profit margin and these are our competitors rate. Okay. Maybe your device maybe might be different from their products. Okay. Right. But I don't think so. That is the right metric to say that hundred percent is the generic profit margin in medical industry and that we can apply in our product. Suraj, I just, I'll take this uh, one. You hear me? Yeah, 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 I can hear you. Yeah, I yeah, see just uh, being, it's a very short time presentation. We have not taken very detailed uh, information. 
as you asked right the market prices are you know like medical are not 100% which are even very very high and the market device that are available are like more than 200% of our cars even what i said 100% if we take 20k i am talking about 40k profit the market products which does not have these features which has only few features are costed like more than 50000 okay so our products are already if you look at we have like taken ultra ultra low cost and we are there in this electronics field for last 20 years we have worked on so many products which already has gone for the mass production we know what components to be used and how we can do a cost optimization what we are trying to do is we are trying to reduce the manufacturing cost and use the technology and you know like the now systems are like very well sensors are available in the market earlier those were very costly and still people are selling at high cost but now being the technology has come so we are going to use sensors that are available at affordable cost and going to make a product at very cheaper affordable and we are still keeping android as an example to show what is the business case okay. but we have to come up once we make the product and then we have to work on the pricing this is just an estimation okay okay fine one uh, one last question so the uh, cree product and the covid products that you mentioned in the last and the second last slide okay yeah. So is it like, are you currently selling it or it is currently under production or the prototype, the, the last and the second last slide? Yes. This, this one? one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, are you selling these products like it's currently out in the market? Yeah, the, uh, just uh, I, will, I will answer a uh, will. The ther uh, yeah, thermometer, I think actually we have made the product ourselves. That is a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all, uh, we are actually planning for the market uh, thing launch because already a lot of Chinese thermometers are available where we, we, the costing is the big problem. So mm -hmm. just we are trying to add on now that actually thing no we are adding something like uh, 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 access control and everything into the thermometer or uh, we are actually in wall mount like that we are actually changing the, our design because the simple handle the thermometer actually the very big we have very calm big competition with the Chinese. So okay. just we are just re spinning to a different uh, thing that we have not shown it because uh, they have shown a RFID here in the screen. So just we are come, uh, adding value so that we will be differentiated in the price. So it will not be in the uh, segment where already big competition from the Chinese. Okay. So uh, regarding, regarding the pulse oximeter, actually we are planning with the two models. One is the fingertip with the BLE. BLE because we, we want to come with the app. And another thing is we are going for a wrist based where actually the person can uh, wear it, mm -hmm. uh, I think. Because they had... for corona patient, there yeah, is yeah. a long time in the monitoring. So if you wear it in the hand, you can continuously monitor their oxygen saturation using this. Yeah, but uh, what, what, what I'm trying to understand is, uh, what are the products that you're currently selling? The next... Yeah, see, uh, currently we are selling only like just we have come see, if you look at the top line, completed design. Okay, fine. So this is already in the market? Yeah. This okay. bin is already in the market in the sense we... We just completed, you know, this all done for COVID-19 and we just completed only few things have given to some customer, few are evaluating and mm -hmm. few have been completed. We are looking for uh, some customer lead where we can sell. See, EC tag, we have our own product. If you look at, I've shown key products. We are looking for some customers who can take this product. It can be used for COVID-19. Social distancing ID card, if you look at, we already into a school business where we have BL ID cards for tracking students. The same thing. We have added social distancing, which can be used for office or can be schools. We are also looking for someone who can take our product and sell. Currently, we are not started selling this. We just completed. We are looking for some partner to take it or some distributor or somebody who can help us to generate the business. That is on the completed design. Under design, we just completed and few things we are working on. The proposed design, we just just proposed. That's it. Fine, fine. Thank you. Thank you. That's all from us. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. Thank you for your time. And we also would uh, like to get you guys support uh, on uh, designing the product. Also, if you guys can help on the completed design product to take it market with your concept, please do help us. Thank you so much. Mary. Thank you. Absolutely. We would love to help you out. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, moving on to the next uh, pitch by Mr. Sanjeev. Uh, Mr. Sanjeev.
Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we have a presentation to. Yeah, I have a presentation. So can I share the screen? Sure, please. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Welcome, Sanjeet. Yeah. Thank you. I think you you can you won't be able to see both, right? I think it's fine. Okay. So is it visible? Not okay. yet. Not yet. I need to do a share screen, right? Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, uh, so shall I start? Sure. Yeah, uh, so basically, you know, I'm an industrial designer and I've been in the industry for around 20 plus years, 20, 23 years. And in 2018, you know, I started a design firm, Formby Design and Research Private Limited. Okay, so we are uh, into product design, industrial design, you know, product bringing products to market, design research. You know, that's our core business. So when, you know, when COVID started, you know, we, I mean, as all, because industrial design is, starts from the very investment part, right? So we were also very quite badly affected. So we started thinking, you know, what is that, you know, we can do right, right now uh, to, you know, to mitigate this and, you know, and uh, we saw a lot of people, you know, helping, uh, you know, as on a voluntary basis, you know, making products and also we also thought what we can do. So uh, one of the things which caught our, our attention was, you know, like uh, we had there were a lot of people who were making face shields. And uh, when we started understanding the uh, disease, you know, you realize, you know, there are a lot of, uh, uh, there is this uh, spray happens and, uh, when you talk and especially you know people like doctors who are with the patients yeah uh, so uh, we uh, we first did a, a study you know what is that we can do you know so one thing what we found is you know like face shields uh, so face shield you know there were a lot of uh, voluntary activity there were a lot of people who were making face shield with OXP sheets and uh, uh, but uh, typically for doctors. So we did a study of some of these products, you know, UV sterilization, these face protection goggles, yeah, all these uh, kind of products. And then we realized that, you know, uh, face shield is one area where we can take it up, given, you know, the kind of, you know, uh, on a very basic level, because, you know, like uh, uh, we can do this, you know, there is not much of an investment that we need to start with. So we start, studied it and uh, realized that, you know, the, uh, the available face shields which are there in the market uh, needs uh, much more uh, design intervention, you know, like especially if you're talking about doctors, doctors and uh, people who are in COVID care. And also we started this project somewhere around in March and we were expecting when the lockdown was there. And then we realized, you know, we can, when the clinics and all open, uh, this uh, this may be a major requirement and uh, uh, we try to improvise on this design. So this is the design that we have done. So the, the, what this, this is, you know, this gives a, a full face coverage and, you know, up to the years and uh, we did a, a design, uh, you know, I actually went through an industrial design product design process, you know, trying out and then we made a, we made the design complete. So the idea was, you know, to make a really the Mercedes-Benz of HD kind of a thing. You know, so uh, how will you, you know, a very well designed. Uh, so this is a product that we came up with and uh, we use the best in class material because earlier people were using PVC, polyester, and we studied, so we bought uh, some of the products which are there in the market. 
so you know they were very uh, uh, they were uh, not very suitable for a daily use and then uh, sustainability is one of the main aspects which i'm very interested in and uh, you know this uh, disposable face shields we uh, thought you know we'll make something which is uh, fully clean uh, which can be fully clean because uh, you know there, there is a, a a tie which is happening between you know having a fully sanitizable one and having something which is comfortable and uh, when you when you talk to doctors and all they are more interested they are their main concern is safety so we did something where safety is more important so we removed all the foam parts and all these are generally seen on the face sheet and uh, uh, we had a, a, a adjustable band so it's very comfortable to use you know you can use it just to the required product so this is uh, one of the studies that we have done with it these are the prototypes so this is the final product this is now from uh, two days back you know it has started listing on amazon we have already sold some you know 100 plus pieces it's been ready you know for the last two weeks then you know bangalore is in a lockdown right now that's another small hassle that we have uh, so uh, this is in the in the market so uh, the target users uh, so this is the front. so this is the target users that we are looking at we are still talking to people distributors we are trying to talk to the government you know we are meeting them uh, did a lot of conversation with uh, uh, with some of the factories universities etc so these are all ongoing uh, but the thing is uh, you know it is in the market we just managed to get it into the market uh, the products are ready and then uh, we were thinking you know how we'll take this to the future uh, so in in one aspect of this is you know uh, so the future proofing is you know we when we realized when we made the face shield and because of the shape and all it just become very rigid we are uh, doing a different variation mainly like it's from 0 0.5 mm to 0 0.18 mm so uh, we realized, you know, it is really uh, uh, rigid and uh, robust. So this we can take it later on to as a factory uh, for the factories. And you know, once the COVID thing is over, that fear is over. And then uh, when we spoke to doctors, you know, doctors realized that you know this is something which they'll use even after the uh, even after the COVID crisis on because like uh, people who are like gynecologists and all who. Uh, you know, they have a lot of blood splashing issues. So one this face shield gives a very nice protection. Otherwise, you know, they always have blood splashing and they remove it, they clean themselves. So this is one product which they realize it's, uh, it has got a potential later on also. And the other doctors like ENT surgeons who work very closely with the patients, you know, this can be a very good face protection thing. And uh, so these are the, some of the base financials. Uh, uh, you know, with the current, we desperately need funding for uh, you know expansion in terms of marketing, uh, then um, more investment because you know this is uh, mainly uh, quantity driven. So we just made thousand pieces and we are selling it, but you know our uh, our, our investment goes up because you know we are not getting uh, quantities uh, pricing because of the scaling. So uh, this is the basic requirement. And when it comes to COVID, you know, there's another uh, really uh, interesting product which we want to start prototyping is the is the UV cleaning. It's uh, there are a lot of UV devices which have come up. Uh, one of the things which we have thought of, you know, is for a, a smaller device for the front desk and all, where you know it can clean in 30 seconds. So that's the uh, that's what we are looking at. You know, where we can. Uh, say if you if you have to do a transaction, especially in banks and uh, clinics and all, you know, you're giving a card, your uh, ATM card and your uh, uh, and accepting money, you know. So this is something which people are, have a fear in. And uh, most of the UV devices which are available here I have to wait for around 10 to 15, uh, around five minutes. Expect uh, something like five minutes, 10 minutes. There are products uh, abroad like in you know, clean slate UV and all this takes 30 seconds. So that's something which we are looking at, you know, we need to build these prototypes. So which is also need support. So thanks, you know, so this is our uh, basic presentation. Hey, hi Sanjeev. Yeah, hi. Uh, so currently you are manufacturing out of where? 
so I am doing a contract manufacturing in Bangalore itself. So I'm uh, getting the um, uh, the phase, the visors done, which is a which is a Sabic product. Sabic was earlier G plastic, so they have a converter in Bangalore, and uh, I have another vendor who's doing the moldings for the uh, for the frame. Okay. So these two things are made in uh, uh, Bangalore itself, mm. and you know, like uh, you just need to put it in a packet and sell it. You know, so currently that's how we operate. You are uh, assembling it, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, I am assembling it. Okay. No, so I'll tell you the current scenario, like market scenario of this product. Okay. So yeah, I know. That. Like, yeah, you might, might be knowing it. Okay. Yeah, right. There are n number of, like, literally n number of manufacturers. Okay. Yeah, right. And, and everyone, they all are, uh, you know, uh, making it in some other other unique way. Like, they, yeah. They, they, you can call it maybe they are considering the disposability of it, or maybe they are factoring in each and everything that is the market demand. Okay. Yeah. How are you different from like I wouldn't say different. Like, what is the USP of your particular business? That I want to know. Yeah. So the USP of uh, what we started off is the product itself, and uh, you know, like uh, just you know, the price now has gone down really badly. Okay. So what uh, the what I'm trying to do? What we have? The, our main product is a 0.5 mm. So generally, what others have is a uh, you know, somewhere around, uh, you know, uh, 180 microns. So I started from 500 microns to 180 microns. And if you see the interesting thing is, and I made a mistake also, you know, I did 180 microns, 250, 375, and 500. The 180 and has moved some five or 10 pieces. Uh, I, I've sent it to, I've uh, just tied up with, signed up with Amazon fulfillment. So I've sent it some 15, uh, this almost hundred, almost the 120 pieces which I have sold, and the most things which I am selling are the higher ones, the 0.5 mm, which costs around 350. Okay, and so uh, that is how the product is, and you know some of the doctors which are taking. Uh, you know, when people talk to me, they talk for the higher ones. They don't talk to me for the lower ones because the lower ones are available. So that is one of the USPs I have found, and you know I I haven't started promoting this brand you know i put a brand as face safe okay now i realize you know because of uh, the safety then i'm talking to some safety companies you know who make safety products so they are also you know finding it very interesting they say they see the product and they say yeah this is something which we can do it, do it. you know who does cnc uh, who are mentioning on cnc you know like uh, the 0.5 mm gives a very good protection though maybe you know major big blocks coming to them then that cannot be protected but you know some uh, coolant splashing so there is a future to this business and uh, you know face shield itself you know will last for some time so uh, then you know then you can have uh, children's protection you know face shield for kids and so in the face of category there is a roadmap ahead for you know later on you can get into helmets and, you know now you know the helmet guys are getting into face shield so we can go for uh, better products, you know, molded products. And so uh, that's the future of the business and how this business will go forward. Right now, you're only looking for funding. That's the only... Yeah, uh, yeah. Manufacturing-wise, I'm fine. Uh, you know, I have the experience, expertise and all that. Uh, and Ill- funding uh, do you require and for how long? Uh, see, currently, I'm uh, the, the very initial, you know, I'm looking at it somewhere around uh, six lakhs kind of a thing to... A uh, ramp up production, uh, you know, ramp up uh, storage space. Storage facility is another thing, though. I have right now, you know, that some schools have closed down, right? So I've tied up with them, you know, so I'm storing some of the products and assembling it there. Uh, so, so then, you know, a place. Uh, so those are the kind of basic things, you know, like uh, that's the kind of funding that we are looking at. And I think the brand is uh, there is, and then to build this brand, you know, so I talked to some of the actually this idea of face of being a brand was told by one of the uh, wholesaler distributor friends in whom I, you know we started talking and then we became so uh, of their suggestion and uh, so uh, we realize you know there is a huge uh, bandwidth as a as a company and as a product line as a profit line in this okay, fine, right. fine. thank you sanjit that's all from my side oh right thank you thank you very much yeah thanks for the opportunity I think uh, with specific to the face shields uh, thing, I think there are a lot of uh, fundraisers that are going on and people are openly contributing to that. 
I think uh, when we talk about uh, Bangalore specifically, I think uh, there are a couple of uh, like couple of all projects similar to yours which are happening and uh, being supported by the community in general. So you may want to try that option. Uh, we can help you connect to uh, some crowdfunding campaigns if that helps. I, uh, I I mean I try I don't know of any product yeah you can help me with it uh, you know I would be very glad to look at I've spoken to a lot of banks uh, but then you know for the last uh, the design services you know like uh, uh, some of the products which design services like this you know like uh, when you start uh, when you say give it to a, a one product which you design then you get a lot of traction from that, you know. So I've I've done some uh, machine which was in Intex, which got an award and all that. But then the automobile industry crashed. So you know, like uh, I wasn't getting much traction from the banks. Uh, so please connect to if there is uh, someone who will be able to support, you know, even crowdfunding. That'll be great. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? It's... I don't think so. Oh, okay. Right. Thank Th you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Next up, we have uh, Sarthak Sethi. Can we have uh, Mr. Sarthak Sethi? Um, so, am I audible now? Yeah, sure. So, so let's just start in a second. Yeah. So, uh, so are you able to see my screen now? Are you able to uh, see my screen? We can. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So we'll just start with the presentation. So hi, I'm Sartak and I'm the co-founder of uh, IELTX uh, Solutions. And uh, today I'm here to introduce you to our uh, flagship product, which is Obilizer. And it's a lightweight, portable, handle and app controlled UVC sterilizer. So let us just start with a very short video. So as you saw, Obilizer does not require any kinds of assets, liquids, and uh, or bleaches for sterilization, and it uses a completely uh, contactless method for disinfection. So it is very good for sterilizing items like currency notes, face mask, or electronic items which may get uh, damaged due to liquids. And then uh, going, going, going to the pricing of the product. So uh, we are currently manufacturing this product at a facility in, in Delhi. And we are also uh, exporting it as of now. So the retail price in India is 4,999. And in uh, international markets, uh, uh, especially in the Gulf, it is $119. And it costs us around $28 to, to basically build this device. 
and going to the market size of uv disinfection equipment so as of january 2020 the market size is 2.9 billion dollars and it is going to exponentially rise because the health and hygiene standards at commercial establishments as well as for the individuals will significantly rise because everyone wants their health and safety first going to the competition we have a, have a quite a few companies entering the uv disinfection market ever since the pandemic started but if you see uh, most of these devices actually come in a box shaped design so only a limited type of objects can be uh, sterilized with these devices for example if you see the below two images only a smartphone or a face mask or a small object can be placed inside but obilizer is kind of a all in one product with which you can sterilize something as small as a uh, as a earphones to something as large as an elevator button so instead of uh, purchasing multiple devices for uh, each and every object uh, it's an all, all in one thing plus it comes with a optional mobile app application with the pro version so the layman does not know that how much time it would take you to sterilize any particular object so with the app it it makes the user very easy uh, so the user just selects the object which they want to sterilize and the recommended timer is automatically set uh, for that object so it it makes life much more easier for uh, it's any element to use and this is the feature which only we are offering to uh, to our customers no other sterilizer in the market offers this feature and uh, finally going on to our uh, international customers so who are based in the uh, gulf and the release as of now so right now we have more presence there compared to here since this product is working better uh, in export than being sold locally so we need some help there so just telling you about that uh, we we are uh, going to launch a uh, obilizer at uh, sharaf dg joy stores which is the largest electronic uh, electronics retailer uh, in the uh, joy in in august and then the devices also currently being used by uh, cleaning companies and car wash companies uh, in the gcc plus we we have, are also in the discussions the deal is not finalized yet so we are in discussions with the rta dubai to basically place these devices in in each and every taxi where after every ride the vehicle can be disinfected so so basically whenever the passenger deboards the vehicle the driver goes to the back seat and they just uh, sterilize the back seat for a period of 2 minutes after which the next customer can enter the vehicle so this is uh, something which we wanted if it can be implemented in india also it if it can be implemented inside ola and uber also if uh, if the if gulf is doing it i think we can also implement this so yeah and then uh, this was our first batch of orders which was shipped around a month back to 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 our first, uh, first customers and then going to the future plans our next product will be a uv contactless parcel delivery locker so so i think this is something uh, uh, with which we uh, as a office goers find a difficulty with so there are a lot of packages which are delivered to offices these days because everyone is all ordering online and even residential buildings but the problem is we are afraid that they may contain the virus plus the delivery is not entirely contactless many times you need to pay cash or many times you need to even sign even during this covid era i know where the, the delivery person is taking signatures from you so for this purpose we have also worked on this contactless delivery locker where the the courier boy can just scan the qr code they can enter the phone number of the receiver and a locker automatically unlocks where they can place the parcel and uh, after the parcel is placed it is blocked for a period of 15 minutes where uh, uh, there is high intensity ubc light uh, uh, inside the chamber and and the parcel is uh, disinfected for 15 minutes post which uh, the receiver automatically gets an sms with an otp to basically unlock the locker and then they can take the items so so it's a completely automated uh, disinfection process and, and it can obviously reduce the number of covid cases inside the universities institutions large uh, corporate car parks and it, residential buildings and uh, it, it it can also prevent the entry of these co uh, delivery persons uh, inside the premises and uh, uh, we are looking to raise $40,000 with up to $50,000 in purchase order financing during the uh, f first year and that's uh, our budget and uh, finally going to the team uh, i come from an iot and embedded systems background with 5 years of uh, experience uh, kartik who is our uh, marketing uh, strategist brings along the experience in marketing analysis and uh, digital marketing and jathar is our software developer who comes from a computer science background 
and uh, thanks and let's save the world together so we can go on to the q a now yeah hi sarthak uh, yeah. it's a nice product like because of the ease of use i mean there are a lot of uh, uv disinfectant products in the market but the ease of use like uh, this is the first product i have seen that it, like it can be used for so many purpose couple of questions that i have uh, first do you have any patent design for this okay so we are uh, basically going to file a, a provisional patent so we didn't file it yet for basically controlling the device with the mobile app on, and, and automatically setting the timer and then the problem which we faced was that if we even file a patent it would take us a time period of 6 yes. months and and by that time someone mm. else can basically grab the market because okay. uh, we as obi laser or obi devices we if we want to build a uh, build a brand where we have all innovative uh, products to basically fight up pandemic mm. so uh, that's why we were focusing more on on the next level of projects which were including the smart uh, uv disinfection locker instead of getting it patented because mm. uh, we need to keep fast with the pace so yeah that that was one of the reason because in india even if you have a patent uh, there are people who who can copy your product so unless or until you are having a turnover of turnover of let's say 100 crores even if you have a patent you cannot technically protect the product and mm. th that is the harsh reality so we are uh, basically going with with the practical thing out, out here so instead of uh, focusing on getting a full patent and then starting the product we are just immediately launching mm. it so that's mm. the reason Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's a very interesting presentation, uh, Sarthak. Uh, just quick uh, recap: uh, What's the price that you mentioned for the uh, product that you're selling? Yes. So, so we have two different pricings. One is for the international export, and one is for India. So, in India, we are offering about four thousand nine nine nine. And the best part is, we are offering three months replacement and one year standard warranty. None of our competitors are offering a replacement warranty and this is the main reason why b2b's are are coming to us by why rta taxi is coming to us because uh, uh, mainly other people are importing these devices from china and they don't even know the rnd uh, inside it and and i just 70% of these chinese products chinese products are actually counterfeits they just place uh, uv and uvb leds which don't actually disinfect the surface and then they they sell the product at a very cheap price but we are uh, trying to build a solution that is actually effective and it actually works and that's why we have also applied for uh, uh, es uh, emirates confirmatory certification which is based in the gulf which is recognized all across europe as well so when we start exporting to even europe uh, that certification can basically work for us uh, technically speaking inside india there is no certain kind of certification which is required to sell such kind of uh, items so okay. yeah uh, so any any uh, specific criteria for the uh, uv lights that you're using uh, that certain standard uh, yes so so basically there are three th three different institutions which we are following uh, one is cdc center for disease control other is uh, sanford medicine and the third is embras medicine so these three institutions have released their own uh, journals they have uh, release their own guidelines their own best practices basically that what is the uvc intensity and the dosage which is recommended to to basically kill the corona virus and uh, these uh, uh, recommendations are being uh, followed by our competitors uh, competitors in the us so uh, very few of these competitors are following it in india in the us everyone is following them so so we have taken those guidelines because uh, once they come uh, come in the uh, implementation 99% guidelines issued by cdc center for disease control usa they would be implemented uh, obviously so we are uh, already building a product which is compliant with those uh, guidelines so Got yeah uh, cool thank you and uh, what what was the current order size that you spoke about so what's the traction that you have right now yeah sure so so right now uh, we don't have much order from uh, uh, india practically is, uh, speaking but uh, from the joe and the gcc we are uh, uh, having uh, i'd say a very good number of orders because uh, these are mainly b2b customers so 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 i'd say each customer is purchasing these uh, devices in triple digits i'd say so okay. that's what i can share because uh, 
our biggest uh, deal which is in discussion is with the RTA Dubai taxi and with the uh, Sharaf DG, which is the largest electronics retailer. So uh, uh, the support which we are looking specifically for you uh, from you is basically reach out uh, is basically reaching out to to customers in India since we we have our connections in the Middle East, so we don't have much connections in in India. So we wanted that if you, if you can support with us because uh, we would definitely like to see this product at uh, each and every household. Right now, since our uh, production capacity is very low, right now our production capacity is six units uh, per day, and uh, that's why the production cost is really high. So, so the 4,000 triple nine uh, price tag which you see for India uh, that can easily come down to something like 2,500 2, if we if we are dealing in thousands of units and uh, that is only possible when we have a very big uh, uh, target customer group specifically in India because the 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 bulk market is obviously in in India uh, if you go if you go outside India we don't have that bulk market uh, out there so yeah. Sure. Uh, thank you very much. I think we can engage at a later stage and explore this. Yeah. Like, where's your uh, manufacturing facility right now? So, so, so it's in it's in Delhi. It's it's in the Janakpuri area. It's in Delhi where we have started it. Plus, okay. in the, in the UAE, we have the basically tied up with a distributor who is basically packing the products. So, so right now, since the shipping cost is is a bit high. What we are doing is we are sending unassembled products and we are sending the packaging. So, so, so they just put a crazy product inside the packaging and then they basically sell it because the the adapter type in the toy is a type G plug or a UK plug and in India it is different. So that's why we are not fully making the product in India, which is basically stored there just to yeah. reduce the shipping cost because shipping cost is, is more about the volumetric weight of the product. So yeah. Okay, fine. We'll definitely connect with you. Sure. Okay. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. And next up, uh, we have sort of charts. Mr. Sort of. Saurabh is online. Hi, Saurabh. Hello. Hi, Saurabh. Are we, are we ready to start? Okay, just, just a second. Had some brilliant ideas coming up uh, by all the innovators. I think yeah. we just have two more left. Uh, Mr. Sorga, then to Mr. Sorga, uh, us. Uh, I, I hope you all can see this. Yeah, we can. Okay. So, uh, morning, good afternoon. Uh, and uh, thank you. Uh, to the accelerator team and everyone else who has given us the opportunity. Uh, we are from uh, Team MedSec and uh, we'll, we'll talk about what MedSec is and uh, how uh, are we uh, supporting and we think how to support the uh, recovery from the COVID. So MedSec in, in, in short is made up of two words. It's, it is from, comes from and SEC comes from security, right? And that is where our objective is to give people something to help them feel safe because uh, more than what the virus does, there is a lot of uh, uh, general panic uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, the, the psychological effects of what uh, people get. Just for the fact that someone says there's a lockdown and, and people start panicking, 
uh, if they will have uh, certain you know uh, stores open or if they can go out or you know those kind of things i mean just and and just because they're at, uh they're a bit challenged as what they, they can do you know the moment a little bit of freedom is taken away from people panic a little bit right and and the key thing information uh, more than anything else right if the internet is a bit stable i apologize because it's in goa it's raining like anything for the last few weeks 24 hours so <laughs> so so we'll see just let me know i'll i'll slow a bit yeah so we started medsec uh, with uh, with the primary objective to uh, help uh, uh, the administration and our first product was a, a, a complete uh, uh, citizen management and quarantine management solution, which was mainly aimed for administrators. The second part of the solution was uh, targeted towards citizens, right? And uh, there, there, there was a key piece of innovation that we will come to, but essentially, uh, this is a, a, a software and application, right, in that sense. And, and most of the innovation that we see or, or the products uh, or solutions have come out the way the hardware. So we were in the software uh, uh, side of it, right? After the initial uh, time out of lockdown, right? not very clear on uh, to uh, prepare uh, something and uh, presence uh, some resources where you know accordingly right so uh, three you piece uh, our application the first is uh, administration there's typically none and and we will see uh, that we believe you know the key of the key innovation that we have the second one was infinite scalability uh, we don't need a lot of effort uh, and, and just because people are all remote, so we don't need a lot of work to scale and deploy to multiple locations, right? So it can, can be done within a second. And the third was that it is hyper local. Why? Because, uh, you know, we are not talking at, at large global scales. For example, if some village, some locality, some neighborhood in a city has, you know, a large number of coronavirus cases, you cannot attack it the, at a state or a city level. You have to go down to that local level and contain it there, right? Which is one of the key things of uh, tackling coronavirus. So, so we had to have that focus, uh, saying that, okay, if it's Maharashtra, then a Maharashtra level solution doesn't work. If it's Andheri West, some region, some society, then we have to target that location, right? And, and to introduce the concept, we went to geolocation as the primary thing as the key piece of technology. Now, instead of having a location-based service in an app, we inverted the model to start with the location. So the first thing we pick up from a, from a person when he or she signs up is the location address, right? And then we automate everything after that. For example, if you have signed in an Andheri location, then you will see the activity around your location. You are added into the local chat group, which is for that location. And, and so the rest of the, uh, the application builds itself around it. So it is very hyper local right from the presence. Instead of saying you've signed up with your name and mobile number, and then you say, okay, well, I'm at this location. We said, okay, we start with the location first. And similarly, we did on the administration side of it. So what happens is if you assign an administrator at Andheri level, or let's say Andheri is a location, is a small uh, suburb, uh, not not small, but a suburb in uh, Mumbai, and then you assign an administrator at Mumbai level. So the hierarchy in terms of geography will follow. You don't have to do a lot of uh, drop down and so on and so forth, right? It's just automatic by the way it does in the uh, in the backend side. So people can sign up without any extra administration, and that was purely done because everyone is working remotely from home, and these things should not take a lot of time. I mean, main focus is to have deployability, right? So we did those few things. Uh, coming to the, uh, the first part, uh, let me talk about what we did with the lockdown exit and uh, what we saw were some of the challenges there, right? So key things there we, we understand is uh, monitoring hot zone locations. Like some of these are containment zones, uh, uh, which, you know, the government sees they, they are published uh, uh, in, 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 in newspapers or, or they're even known uh, uh, public uh, or, or uh, announcements 
uh, media or or you know radio or television but the fact that it stays there i mean there's a way this to the people right and and people are checking these on their let's say if they are going out after the lockdown they're not tv or radios or or print right they're carrying their mobile so so that one once it is published execute this knowledge to the people in real time second what i briefly touched is about uh, location awareness right if someone is traveling from one part of the city to the other how does he know that this is a quarantine zone and i have accidentally or by some way my route is going to be uh, passing that zone right and and the, the other aspect of this is uh, knowing the crowded area let's say you want to you want to go to the grocery or the shopping mall or something but you want to plan ahead of time right and and this is where something like uh, uh, the the government app is not or, or is not planned to do that right so you get the crowd awareness based uh, and and you don't have to be near to anyone you can do this before you being out of your home and and to bring to this uh, at some point of time google had this uh, banner that you see plan before you go right that was the whole mantra or agenda saying you know before you're traveling out look at traffic outside so what we are saying is look at the crowd outside because traffic locations versus a crowd has a different sense to it final thing which i passed about is it has to be scalable very fast right we cannot do something today and say okay we will scale it in 6 months because the problem is today right it needs to be deployable now and with the minimum end user training because every app we see we take a little bit of familiarity right and and if we are young and we can do it and and children can do it faster but listen there is a lot of population like my dad he will still struggle to use a a fancy app i mean he has to see which buttons are doing what and my mom again on the other side and and we are not in the same place they are in different places but typically google map is something which many people have used so our interface our design was to build something around which people already have and not to reinvent the entire customer on boarding and journey so very simple forms minimum end user training so the app can be used with everyone right so coming to the first one part is uh, doing the quarantine zones so how do we do it so this is something which you see uh, uh, at the front uh, this is uh, let me just zoom it a little bit so what you see is a very simple screen as people search and this is the administration side of it you can search for any location right small big an apartment shopping mall airport typically everything and you can assign them sorry you can assign a, a location and say a radius let's say the airport and i want a 2 2 meter or 5 meter radius around it right so you just do that you publish it and then what you can see is the count of triggers how many people passed into that location how many passed out right so this is what you can do and if that location is no longer a containment zone you can go ahead and deactivate it so that in real time this information because it's google map based on the citizen side if you're the user it will just disappear from there right so you don't have to wait for something and someone to do a back end this happens within seconds right and and then again you get these alerts in real time if you are the user on this side on the administration side so this is typically how it is i mean you could say 2 meters 2 uh, uh, kilometers of uh, radius and this typically is 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 how close you can get so that's what i was saying it has to be hyper local because the super spreaders or those things they are a society or a mall or an event place or an office location so this is how how narrow and focused we have to get while uh, trying to contain this so this is where we said we will use the technology the innovation was to invert it and then go about with something like this yeah a uh, coming to next i talked about the citizen side of it how you see as a your own map or application uh, as soon as you log in you see that how you, you set a home location which also sets a lot of the other onboarding things that we uh, talked about and uh, it gives you certain parameters uh, you can search for a location you the crowd so you see the second screen is showing uh, it's a color mark crowd uh, blues are uh, no risk uh, red ones are active cases you have yellow which are like under review or home quarantine and stuff like that and this is self reporting so it's not up to anyone else to uh, for you this is self reporting typically as much as the other to does it it does it the other way around right and and to see if you were exposed you have to be because it's based on bluetooth technology so you have to be in close proximity 
our differences is geolocation based so you don't have to be close to it to know that there is an active covid case in that right you can see it on the map and you can avoid that and then we talked about these uh, geo zones which is in the third screen and if you put it all together this is a heat map sort of a thing which you can see right and based on that you can decide do i want to take this route or do i don't want to take this route right and 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 this and and that that helps you plan your safety around it yeah so this is typically how it works it's just a screen capture taken from the app itself so you you see in it this is in action you know and, and that's just to say uh, how the solution actually works right so so this was one of the key things and and uh, try, primarily targeting uh, the uh, uh, the lockdown exit and lockdown how it happens right and today we see many cities in fact goa one of the places which was the first ones to be declared covid free and now today this week we are in lockdown right after the mandatory lockdowns which happened today we are in lockdown because the this is coming up in different parts right so this is where if i have to step out now i will go look at something like this pune i know i have friends staying there their 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 cities are in lockdown right so now it is much more low as before all of india was in lockdown for 3 weeks but today it is down to the administration the talukas the the panchayats uh, the city administration the mlas they have to manage this and they need something which is scalable and applicable at their level then you know a prime minister coming and saying well the country is on lockdown right so this is where i feel this is technology which is very useful for uh, these people or even uh, if you say cities uh, uh, where there are big societies right all the typical metros which are highly densely populated right this is a technology which they can use without lot of effort it's software as a service they go they plug in their uh, uh, numbers on boarding and boom it works out of the box so this was uh, again uh, you know some examples from the mobile app right it's difficult to bring the mobile app demo but you know probably i can share some uh, recorded videos also so it, it just says that if you are in a red zone you know you'll get alerts if you are close uh, you you get this proximity alert and if you are in a green zone you are in a green zone right a uh, typically it says uh, i am so many meters away because i have set my home location as andheri mumbai but since the lockdown i have been in goa so it always picks up these two differences and it says how far am i from the home location right as uh, some of the tabs that you see again it's a traffic indicator the crowd indicator that i talked about the shield is your uh, containment zone safety and then the this uh, this shopping icon you see and that is where uh, we said okay if we want to do the next uh, development of this or the next fever how uh, what do we do next what is app useful for people so we came up with two things by talking to several people is uh, they want to know where the uh, grocery and pharmacies are like critical supplies which is again today lockdown has happened and that is what most people are asking in uh, whatsapp groups and stuff like that right and uh, the other one is uh, telemedicine right because uh, we still have to take care of people who need uh, medical advice and while talking to people actually this is interesting is uh, one of my friends he connected with his own cousin and and he is a doctor and he has a community of around 300 doctors and and they are coming and telling me that well okay if you if you are building the telemedicine solution already can we do it in partnership so i can deploy it as a white label solution for you for my own community so based on the value that they have seen they said that okay some of the things we know we may not need but if you can just white label and give this solution so i feel that is a uh, sort of uh, a pivot or that is a direction which i think we are going to move forward next right which is making more of these uh, essential uh, services uh, bring to the people yeah briefly i'll touch on the innovation i talked about it inverting the uh, the geolocation model so this is just a bit on that and uh, it's it's one or two minutes so for example i'm saying this is let's say uh, country or a state admin is looking at about 100 people uh, it's all find the no admins here um, let me put this down ah okay better so a country admin is able to see all the citizens under his uh, now let's say he had, he gives an admin of location 1 with 19 people right so this guy can see around this uh, small circle but he see the other right so 81 are still there the state admin can still see people and this guy can see 19 right again he gives a he, he goes and searches google location of some other city and there are 11 people joined there they are already admitted onto the uh, onto the app does not have to add anyone to his dashboard or something it's just automatic right and and similarly as we go on and add people this happens automatic so no administration needed if i am the uh, let's say running this app as a service 
uh, for people, I don't have to click and do anyone. If you join in from your location as an admin, all the other people who have joined from your location, you will be able to see them automatic. And that's the innovation that we say, which makes it deployable very fast and, and makes it infinitely scalable, which means any location, if it exists on Google Maps, you can deploy it there, right? Without needing anything else. Uh, going forward, said yes, and you can monitor everything. It's 24 seven available on web and mobile. So no, not much of administration needed. And, and we looked at how the, how it does uh, support the sustainable development. Uh, so, you know, uh, some of the things, for example, uh, you know, uh, because I said that, that both pieces of it depend on how the application is deployed. If it goes to the uh, administration route, uh, there is something for them. Or if it's just citizens who want to uh, use it, I mean, we will uh, update the, uh, the quarantine zones in the, uh, in the admin panel and that is all done. Right. So it, it's, it's multi-party in that sense. It does not depend that only if the government uses it, then only it will work only or only if I am the administrator of the application, then only it will work. It's a very collaborative environment. Right. And, and that is where we believe that this, uh, suppose the United Nations sustainable development goals, goals, uh, uh, supporting the good health and well-being. That's of course the first, the other was uh, sustainable cities and communities, which is goal number 11. Right. And, and number 17, which is again, very important is partnership for the goals, right? Like we said, it's not just that our objective is to build something and then be like, let's say the app leader or, you know, do this. We want to partnership with other people, get the benefits of what we have built. Like, you know, the example I shared that, you know, my friend's uh, colleague, uh, cousin who is a doctor, he wants to use the same application in different sense. So we'll give it to him. I right? will say, I happily use it because if we are in a location and because of quarantine, we cannot move around. Let it not affect what we can do to help uh, people and citizens, right? I mean, and, and people all around. If someone else is in a different location, they understand the challenges of that region better. Let them use it. Let them bring more benefits to the society as a whole. And that is what we say for partnerships. And then again, the partnership is with uh, the local services. They don't always have the technology or the bandwidth or, or even the uh, financial capability to, to build an app just to become an e-commerce store, right? And, and not all of them will go on a, something like a, like my local Kirana guy, he will not go into something like an Amazon or a Flipkart, right? He's, he's happy, he gets calls and he's scheduling his services like that. Local pharmacy, right? They are not going on there. So this is a partnership where we say, you know, you come on board, you just list your services and then if people are requesting it, they can use it. So that is where we, we are kind of tuned into what the United Nations tells us, how they've set the guidelines for us and we want to be aligned with that also. So overall, it, it accomplishes uh, benefits for everyone. Yeah. So that is what we have. That is, uh, you know, a brief intro of what we are into, what we are doing and, and where we think we are going forward with this. And uh, we're saying, yes, we, we are here to empower everyone to be, beat the virus. And, and we're just telling people, get ready, don't be afraid of it and get ahead let, and let us get ahead of this thing. Yeah. So thank you again uh, for uh, giving us the opportunity. And uh, if you have any questions, please let us know. Uh, and, and we can discuss it further. Hey, hi, Saurav. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, so as I say it, I understand the idea at a conceptual level. Okay. But when I talk about the implementation level, uh, let's yeah. say uh, let, like every user will have to install the app, right? Yes, they can install it. This is completely available on the web as well. So if they just log in like hmm. Chrome browser on the mobile, mm -hmm. it will work there as well. So that is where we understand that people don't want to install another app. I mean, they're already overloaded. So exactly. That, really that was my first point to make. Yes. Yes. You're right. So, so how would how would it's available both services? Services? let's say see there are already there are a lot of players in the market okay if i talk about let's Correct. say telemedicine since you mentioned telemedicine okay so telemedicine uh -huh. like there are already startups into this sector that are trying to do that okay like if you talk about patrick right. and all they are trying to do something like they have done they have already done a lot in telemedicine right so why would I go to another platform and then try to, which, which, which doesn't have the required info. Okay. Like you're trying to build everything now. Mm -hmm. So you won't be having the required information. Let's say I live in Andheri. Okay. And I need particular information regarding like how much, what is the infection rate here or what is like, is the exit, like the lockdown still there or not or whatever. Okay. So you don't have the current data now. 
why would i go to your uh, platform mm-hmm. as a user like i'm talking as a user right so so you say you don't have the data now is that what was the question yeah like w- what data do you have on the website like for a user to come and use your services like use okay, the so, website so other than uh, telemedicine part which we said we are developing uh, the application today it has a list of uh, all the uh, labs and facilities that are already available uh, approved by the government for testing and all of those things so these things are there other than local grocery and shopping which again people have to register those things are not there mm. but the rest of it in terms of uh, what we talked about it, it already is there right so mm. information let's say if it comes like today there are more quarantine zones uh, you know updated by for example goa declared it two days ago in certain regions i have to just go and update it so okay. that is actually live so we don't have to wait on that information so let's say if you are a uh, let's say i mean people check news right they they flip around two three channels right mm-hmm. so that is where we we are not saying like i said we we won't be the only app or we won't be the biggest app that's not our objective mm-hmm. maybe we are something which is also available to someone on the side mm-hmm. now where we see the benefit of why someone would come to us is it's not just one thing that we are giving them right mm-hmm. if they feel that practo can give them but practo just gives telemedicine mm-hmm. what we have is if you want to telemedicine in your local region yes you can get that and and more when it goes to a little bit tier 2 and tier 3 right not everyone is or going to be a practo which you could say is a little bit of a premium high end version right okay yeah so so that is one so our objective is not to be a practo our objective is to bring what people need on a on a first principle basis right okay they need information of what the traffic is what these things are okay can i get a you know a doctor in my for example in a certain building and i know because this was all going in a in a whatsapp chat group mm-hmm. uh, there were two doctors in uh, in the society where uh, where i was and, and i'm not there mm-hmm. and they just wanted to consult with each other now this guy he's just happy that okay he's there in his own society and probably he can answer a few questions right he is not probably even uh, uh, good for everything else so if people are signed up to into that locality they at least see that okay i have a doctor who can at least give me some opd advice right so that that is where it brings these communities together it won't replace something like a practo or in in fact some of the uh, bigger startups in telemedicine who have come right so so that's why i'm saying we didn't build that initially because that would put us in a zone where we are just simply competing with them and then the discussion goes a different way mm-hmm. we said okay what people might need going from a lockdown exit point of view right containment zones that is not something i believe a practo would do right mm-hmm. and and now what is happening is some of the businesses you know they have started looking at this and publish started publishing this as a internal uh, company memo or something like that right that you know these are containment zones in my region or you mm-hmm. know very local so when something basically, like this basically your platform would provide information about all the containment zones about all right. the quarantine centers mm-hmm. so i i i agree with the quarantine centers and containment zone information that you would publish or that would be live on your website that's perfectly okay okay Yep. when 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 i say let's say you also yep. mention about grocery stores okay mm-hmm. like information about different stores that are so anyone can go on google and directly find it right ha huh. okay. they they can do but these local guys are all not, like my local where i would shop i mean that guy is not going on google store right hmm. so so that is one thing the google spot and and in fact better than google store google spot is a platform so mm-hmm. while we integrating with google maps we reached out to google right okay, we reached, okay. we reached microsoft we reached out to google at a very high level we said this is what we are planning so okay. they said that you know fine we can give you google spot to integrate with your own platform but the challenge we see is people are not really coming onto it because they find it a bit challenging theek okay. hai language could be one barrier and their focus is now a bit on the security first rather than trying to sell so some of the shops have even said we are not selling anything right yeah. at at the local level the responses are very very different so instead of taking a top down approach saying well this is a place where you can sell grocery we been worded it and we said well this is a community now if you think you want to sell it to your people and have them uh, send you an order online well here is something which you can use so we have not actually send this saying okay here is a telemedicine solution you can use but we have said this is a community these are the people who have signed up and i didn't show you the sign up the sign up uh, actually says you, if you just sign up as a user 
that region if you're signing up as a pharmacy store or a doctor or a medic or a, these are different pro profiles which people can sign up with so what happens suddenly your community is built up of people who could be useful because it's still, it's still too early to see how things will shape up and and more and more what is happening is travels are getting restricted so as a community like you see you know about 100 years ago it was very localized if there was a doctor in the yeah, community I'm, I'm trying I'm, uh, I'm getting i'm getting your point like it will be a community based yeah. in, initiative and this is a platform that will enable it yes that is where we said the united nations goal is also we picked up one is the community strengthening right that's that's our objective uh, this, this, and, and we are uh, taking that route. yeah two more questions uh, sure, one sure. is uh, what would be the revenue model okay and second is what are you looking for so as a revenue model it's a it's a paper use like uh, you know if someone is selling through the platform there is a little bit of commission you know and, and very minor this is the to help us uh, you know run okay. our costs and yeah. keep yeah. it a little bit of profit and mm -hmm. and that's what because you cannot charge for something like essential services it just goes against the you know feeling people start to feel bad right mm -hmm. so and and once you have users then what happens is the other opportunity like google right and and this is where i keep bringing up google because google offers a lot of free things and then they bring up with adver advertisements so for example if you know there are enough users then you could connect businesses who are selling uh, you know covid essentials for example uh, face mask sanitizer so those can be again channels so that's that's sort of our two two pitch uh, uh, business model right i mean two two prong business model yeah okay okay and uh, to the other question what are we looking out of it uh, we're not really looking to learn a lot or not sorry not learn earn a lot from this uh, we we are we are very modest people uh, you know our, our team and our team of developers our actual uh, uh, area of business is uh, financial services fintech industry so we come from uh, that part of the business okay. and and we saw the struggle right and and uh, to believe it or not i've been out of my own home for last several months okay. and i'm not sure i want to go back uh, either to mumbai or delhi because both are very high risk zones and i keep getting the news that is how i know yeah. so i have been displaced right but still today i want to know what is happening so i i don't want to be uh, uh, let's say a big profit earner i want to just make it enough so i can uh, earn uh, profits for my uh, stakeholders my investors uh, my uh, stakeholders so so it will be a business model which will be guided by what my investors tell me right so i'm i'm open to that or uh, how the mentors tell me uh, because there's a lot of money again you know because if you are selling a hardware product you know you have profit margins and those things to talk about but let's say if you're pure pure a uh, uh, software model then it's a, it's a bit different right and and our business uh, model like i said comes from those things so overall end of the day we want to be enablers we think we have a, a understanding of the technology uh, we know how we can uh, get this out to the market like i said one person friend has already approached he wants to white label the service i said very fine you can do that so we want to be enablers of the ecosystem in the end right and we want to partner with the right people to to make it happen okay fine thank you so much thank you thank you so much for the presentation thank you again yeah. thank you varun yeah bye bye varun yes uh, do we have anyone else just for the uh, no i think uh, toyam was there uh, he was scheduled but he is not present they dropped out today, so. okay okay reasons okay so fine i think we're done for the day so i think we can end right yes yeah okay thank you guys thank you so much for your time and listening out to us and the whole q and a session it was a it was really a great event we liked most of the pitches and we will definitely like uh, we are looking forward to work with some of them we will we'll get back to you in some time like we have a few more pitch sessions like this was the first phase like uh, the first phase happened this was the second phase now we have another phase after this we'll come up with the results and we'll definitely work with some of you so thank you thank you so much for your time and the pitch thanks a lot guys thank you so much yeah okay bye bye हेलो अभिजीत अभिजीत अभिजीत
Hallo.